Sri, thanks for making time to talk to us about the IntelliHut product. Absolutely, yeah. So this is a pretty interesting product. It actually looks quite European in its design. It has that classic European structure. Can you tell us a little bit about the product? Well, you know, everything we design, we like it not only to look good, but have state-of-the-art performance. As a company, we believe in energy efficiency and also the health and safety of hot water that we produce. Mm -hmm. This product delivers on both. Okay. So this is a CO2 air to water heat pump. Can you walk us through how it works? You have a top chamber and a bottom chamber. How do they sort yeah. of tie together? So let me just give you a quick overview of how heat pumps, heat pump water heaters work. Mm -hmm. Today's technology for heat pump water heaters, you know, you have the heat pump and you have a storage tank and you have to keep a lot of water uh, hot, essentially hundreds and thousands of gallons of water stored. Mm -hmm. Two problems, the water is stagnant and the water has to be kept stratified. Mm -hmm. In an essence, today's heat pump have to make a choice between are they efficient or are they gonna produce healthy water? Now, as a consumer, I really want efficient water and healthy water at the same time. So we went on a quest to invent a device that does both and it's powered by CO2. So I'd like to tell you more. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So we have a heat, CO2 a heat pump here, uh, a very environmentally friendly refrigerant. It also works great in uh, lower te uh, temperatures. And then on the bottom, we built a thermal battery. So what we do is we absorb the heat from the air and then store it in the thermal battery. And inside the thermal battery, we built a on-demand heat exchanger through which your domestic water flows. So when you open the faucet, cold water flows in and gets heated to the right temperature. No water is stored, uh, thereby we produce you know, very efficient, clean, safe, and healthy water. So the heat exchanger in the bottom where you've got that tubing, what size of tubing and what is that tubing actually made of that's inside of your battery? So the, the battery itself is a mixture of water glycol mix. And we invented this really cool glycol concentration sensor that ensures that you're keeping the right concentration of glycol. Mm -hmm. The heat exchanger is all stainless, uh, a single uh, stainless steel tube that mm -hmm. sits inside. It has high turbulence and it's, 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 uh, it uh, uh, essentially heats water to the right temperature as soon as you open the faucet. And is it a single pass that runs through the battery? It is a single pass. Okay, so a single pass through your battery is advantageous. So we're from Canada, okay. and certainly in Canada water quality is a concern, but your comments about water safety, it's law in Canada. Yeah. So we don't have to worry about people doing things like having bacteria grow in tanks, yeah. but we have to be aware of, you know, there are people out there that won't do that. Yeah. That single pass will help you with water quality concerns. Absolutely. If you start to scale that heat exchanger, I'm assuming your expectation is increased velocities will keep the heat exchanger oh, battery absolutely. Clean. So, so a couple advantages, by, by by, first of all, no bacteria, no stagnant water, super, super high. It has like 400 times the velocity in mm -hmm. tanks. Mm -hmm. At the same time, when you heat water the way we do, there is no scale formation. So the unit runs like new day in and day out. Gotcha. So this unit, I've looked at the spec on the side of it. So it's 15.4 kilowatts. So for people who don't work in kilowatts, that's 90,000 BTUs. Yep. Well, what sort of on-demand domestic can you see this unit putting out? This unit is a perfect fit for a commercial restaurants. So if you have McDonald's, you'd want to put two of these. You would okay. take out two gas-fired units, you would slide this one in, and essentially it'll start absorbing all the waste heat that is there in restaurants, convert it into useful hot water. Yeah. And do you know roughly with that 90,000 BTUs how many gallons per minute you can get out of this unit? Oh, you, you know, it, it depends on the application, but this unit will provide, you know, 10 to 12 gallons per minute on demand. And what's the lift on that? Uh, the, so it depends, again, you know, what, what your inlet temperature is. But at about 100 degree rise, you get about, I want to say, I have to go back to the specs, about 100, 110 gallons per hour. In That's pretty of, good. Yeah. That's pretty good, all things considered. Yeah. Interesting. So you're looking at this for more of a commercial application. Is there any residential application you'd see for technology like this? This is great. I mean, you could put it, except it has to be quite a large home. So homes, or maybe colder climate in Canada, the, you know, this unit would be a fit. There's a lot of big homes in Canada. We're working on That's a design right. for a house right now, 65,000 feet. Think about that, 65,000 square foot home. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure this would go in there, but it's interesting. Yeah, how many of these, unit for that. Yeah, how many of these have actually been installed in North America currently? Not not many yet. We are just starting to take orders. Awesome. Uh, and we're going to start fulfilling it uh, starting May, uh, middle, uh, end of May. I expect there'll be hundreds of thousands of years pretty soon. And where do you see the, it's going to be a tricky question, I'm not a sales guy, but where do you see the price point for something like this? What do you think it's going to look like? Nobody will hold you to a number, but yeah. I'm sure people listening to this will go, this is neat technology, yeah. 90,000 BTUs, roughly, what yeah. would the cost be? So we, are de we have developed this unit to be competitive with gas-fired condensing water heaters, mm -hmm. because we believe in decarbonization. 
So anytime you're going to put a condensing 100 gallon 199 water heater, you should be able to put one of these for about the same price. Interesting, interesting. And so the heat exchanger, you talked earlier about it being a water and glycol mix. I'm assuming that's a factory critical charge thing. That's not something a technician in the field needs to mess with in any way? No, not really. So from the factory, it'll go with a predetermined amount of glycol. Yep. And then when you install it in the field, we are having people make a small connection to the thermal battery. It has an automatic fill, so it'll automatically fill. It'll ensure the glycol concentration is right based on where, whatever your zip code is. And then I'm assuming your stainless steel construction is specific because of pH concerns with the glycol over yeah. time. You don't have to be worried about anything breaking down inside of the unit. No, in fact, the glycol we use is food safe. I mean, technically you can drink it, though I wouldn't advise it. But that glycol could fall on the ground and nothing to do. It's food grade, it's safe. Yeah, it's more over time as the glycol's in the system and it starts to break down over time yeah. as we heat it up and yeah. you know have those issues that come into play. But with the stainless steel design, I'm assuming you're not no, concerned. No problem. How many parts would be in this unit? Like, is it a lot of moving parts? Is it just oh, a few parts? Just a few parts. Really, the moving part, are, you know, we have a pump, we have the compressor, we have the expansion valve. Those are really the big moving parts. Interesting. But otherwise, Interesting. it's quite designed to be super robust. So as we're standing here, I just want to point to the larger commercial unit. So you've got this much larger, my understanding is this unit right here is the inside battery unit. That's right. And then you have the outdoor unit on the outside of the booth. So That's right. this battery inside, what sort of capacity does this have? So, you know, we can, you know, people can usually think about thermal batteries or, or storage tanks, right? Mm -hmm. If you were to think about storage tank, this would roughly be about a 400 to 500 gallon tank. But really, I don't want people to make the comparison, but that, that's about the range. Yeah. This, depending on where you are, if, if you live in the uh, south, this would be equivalent to a 750 gallon tank. Yeah. If you live in the north, it might be more like a 400 gallon tank. Yeah. And just to be clear for people that don't understand that, what we're talking about is if in California, if your water's entering at 55 degrees, yeah, exactly. you know, that's different than if in Florida it's entering at 75 degrees. Exactly. That lift dictates the size of the battery. Exactly. What sort of capacity would this actually have from a BTU standpoint? So this goes in combination with our IE6, our modular heat pump. Yeah. Again, it, it, And that's the outdoor unit we see on the outside. That's the, the outdoor unit. Yeah. This is designed again to heat water on demand. So you put one IE6 and two thermal batteries, that'll serve uh, 80 to 100 room hotel. About 100 unit apartment complex. Awesome. Well, can we make a, take a walk and yeah, have a look at the outdoor unit too? Yeah, let's do that. So I take it this unit would be treated just like most rooftop units that you would actually just have this outside? Yes. It's uh, Pretty cool looking unit. It is, yeah. So you can see here, we designed this unit uh, to be modular in construction. Okay? And what I mean by that, when you think about water heating, a lot of water heaters are installed by plumbers. You know, when we are bringing refrigeration technology to water heating, when you start working on refrigeration, you require special licenses, you're required to handle refrigerants, pull a vacuum, this and that. End of the day, it, it, it imposes an undue burden on contractors. The way we have designed these units is you really don't have to, you don't need a HVAC license because you're not going to be working on refrigerants. Anytime you want to service one of these units, you simply pull a cassette out, undo two water connections, undo two electrical connections, put another unit in, and then you're done. So it helps our customers be up and running within minutes. It helps our contractors be able to serve their customers in the fastest, most efficient manner, manner possible. It's an interesting design. Like it's a really attractive looking piece of equipment. I mean, obviously that doesn't mean much to a lot of people, but as an HVAC nerd, it does to me. I oh, like yeah. that the equipment looks cool. We, we want our units to look good. A critically charged unit like this has a lot of advantages because there is a shortage in the trade. There's not a lot of technicians that you exactly. know are available to work on equipment. So a packaged outdoor, packaged indoor, you're literally just connecting the two. And as you have identified, right. you now have domestic. That's right. Any plans to do any sort of heating around a technology like this, or is it mainly just domestic at this point? Uh, it's mainly domestic, but this is a very versatile unit. So you could actually apply this. Because what this one does is it produces hot glycol. So you have a supply and a return. We are going to use that hot and glow, uh, colder glycol to charge a thermal battery. But you could use the same to heat yeah. a building. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it, it'll work as a boiler. Yeah, it's a very, very interesting technology. Now, the other thing that you had is you had some point of use technology as well. Can we look at that while we're here? Yeah, we can. Do, let me mention one more thing, by the yes. way, with this. Which we designed the thermal battery and the heat pump uh, sort of in two pieces because we, as a company, you know, we believe in sustainability. And by designing it as two separate pieces, we are able to integrate solar. 
And so starting in October, we are going to introduce the solar module. Interesting. And literally that solar module is going to slap onto the unit and be installed in minutes. And you'll be able to power our unit using solar power. That's an ingenious method. You've got a battery here already. The battery doesn't care. Obviously, the battery being the other piece we looked at, exactly. it doesn't care how we charge it. That's, exactly. that's really smart thinking. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Well, it's very want, innovative. You want to look at the... Yeah, let's do that. Yours? Yeah. <clears throat> So you get the freestanding one, just so we get it. So this is the unit actually installed at the fixture level. So it's designed as a point of use disinfection device, correct? Yes. So kind of going back to you know how we think as a company, we want to produce efficient water. At the same time, we want that water to be healthy. Mm -hmm. So what happened after COVID when building got turned off, right? All the waters became stagnant in buildings. The chloramine levels came down and building systems became contaminated. Interestingly, John Hopkins ran a study where they found that after they replaced all the older manual faucets with automatic faucets, they actually had a spike in Legionella uh, in, in, their, in their hospital. Mm -hmm. So they found that these automatic faucets were actually growing bacteria in the aerators and valves. So as we put COVID and this piece of information together, it became very clear to us that you know, our industry really needs a technology that can not only heat water, but can sanitize that water before it's consumed. And that's what this product and is. And what is it actually using to sanitize the water that's coming out of the fixture? So we do a couple of really cool things. First, uh, we heat the water using quartz tubes. Yep. It, it puts out infrared radiation, and so it produces hot water without scaling. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a lot of scale, then you actually lower your risk of producing Legionella or you know, growing Legionella. Second, as the water is leaving, we inject ozone that's also produced here internally, and that ozone is injected into the water and it disinfects water. And it does an even more cooler thing, that ozone travels with the water to the faucet, mm -hmm. and then it kills the bacteria in the faucets and valves. Interesting. So has there been any outside independent research on this particular technology to show like this is a yeah, good idea, a good application? Yeah. We are, currently, this unit is being tested in the national lab, and we are having very positive results. What do you see the advantage to this? Again, being that we're from Canada, in Canada, yeah. we're expected to hold our water at a set temperature so we don't grow yeah. bacteria. What do you see the advantage of this being? This, I think, should go in every school, every airport, every retail building. If you ever have a, a, a sink that is for public use, I think you need one of this, this product. And what sort of cost are you thinking this would be? Oh, this is going to be priced very similarly to our current uh, you know, point of use water heaters. Interesting. Awesome. Yeah, it looks great.